The Hatchet is a ranged damage dealer, often taking out early enemies with just one hit. Careful positioning and use of advantage can quickly bring victory against single targets, but the Hatchet may falter when facing swarms of smaller enemies. In this ninth video covering the starting classes of Gloomhaven, we'll take a closer look at the Hatchet from the Jaws of the Lion DLC. We'll start with an overview of how Hatchet plays, then take a look at the level 1 and X cards before going over early item recommendations. So let's talk about Hatchet. Hatchet is a medium health character starting at 8 HP and has a hand size of 10. His claim to fame is his favorite, which is an ability that allows him to do extra damage on ranged attacks and is the class's primary mechanic. This then leads us to the Hatchet's main role as a ranged single target DPS character. While Hatchet does have some multi-target abilities, these are generally pretty weak, making him less effective with larger groups of smaller enemies, but when it comes to higher health enemies, Hatchet will absolutely demolish them. Using the favorite, Hatchet can get attacks with values as high as 9 at level 1, but can consistently get attacks of 5 and 6. And remember that these are ranged attacks, which typically don't have values this high. The Hatchet has a few weak spots though. He will struggle with movement a bit, as at level 1 his highest reusable, non-situational move is a move 3, though there are a couple of lost cards that can give him move 4. Also, Hatchet doesn't have any late initiatives at level 1, so there won't be much opportunity to go late to avoid aggro or let enemies come to us first. Finally, the hand size will limit our use of lost cards, as having the favorite active already leaves us down one card. So with that out of the way, let's get into the cards now. First up is the favorite. As I've already mentioned, this is the main mechanic for Hatchet, and once activated will give us 2 XP and then allow us to use our favorite axe to deal plus 3 damage on a ranged attack. When the attacked enemy dies, the favorite is dropped and may be picked up again with a loot action or by normal end of turn looting. Once we have it back, we can use it again to do plus 3 damage on another ranged attack. Using the favorite means you will be constantly chasing your axe around, but careful consideration of enemy locations and movements can keep you from wasting too much time. The best situation is to always throw your axe forward and never attack enemies behind you or too far away from the main path through a scenario. This can be easier said than done, but once you master it, not only will you be dealing high damage throughout a scenario, but you will also be the richest player from picking up all the loot that was on top of your axe. The bottom of the favorite allows us to wound one adjacent target and then move three with jump, though this typically won't see much use as activating the top part of this card should be your first move most of the time. The initiative is a nice early 17. Next we have Retrieval, which is best used in conjunction with the favorite. The top is a melee attack of two, but if the attack is on the enemy with our favorite, we will recover our favorite with the attack. This can be nice to finish off an enemy and get our favorite back without having to use another turn to do so. The bottom though is another great way to get the favorite back with a move one and loot one. Remember, loot actions will give us our favorite back too. The initiative on this one is a 46. Close cut is next with a top attack three on two enemies and gain one XP. This is a decent melee attack, but since we are mostly focused on ranged attacks with Hatchet, this attack will be more situational. It might be good to finish off a couple of enemies, but we'd probably be better served using a ranged attack with our favorite or moving to the enemy with our favorite. The bottom is a good hit and run ability with an attack 2 and then move 2. The initiative on this one is an okay one at 25. Then we have Center Mass. The top is a good all around go to attack 3 range 3. Remember though that with our favorite, this would be an attack 6. The bottom is a move 3 and then push 2 on one adjacent enemy. This is a great ability for a ranged character as we can move up to an enemy, maybe push them onto a trap, then hit them with a ranged attack to finish them off. Even without a trap though, we can simply use this to move up and make sure we don't have disadvantage on our ranged attack against that same enemy. The initiative here is a 24, so another decent one for going a little earlier than most. Next we have Stopping Power. The top is another attack 3, but range 2 this time. However, if we have wind to use, we can add plus 1 to the range and push 2 and gain 1 XP. The bottom is a move 3 with jump, then immobilize all enemies move through, activate wind, and gain 1 XP for a loss. So this brings me back to what I've said before, I generally hate move loss cards. Even with the jump and immobilization, this ability will rarely be worth the loss, especially at only a move 3. Remember, because of the favorite, we only have 9 cards to work with. The initiative isn't great either at 35. Our next card is a double loss, but much more useful. 
The top is an attack 3, range 4, target 2, activate wind, and gain 2 XP for a loss. The range 4 gives this attack a lot more usability, and attack 3 on two different targets is pretty good. But combine this with some advantage from Eagle Eye Goggles, maybe a power potion for plus 1 attack for both attacks, and then add the favorite to one of the attacks, and you have a killer move. Still, we'll want to wait for the right moment to use this, as it is a loss card. The bottom can be equally good though, particularly against high health elite enemies or bosses. It will double the value of our next attack and give us 1 XP. Use this bottom with the top of power pitch, which we'll cover in a second, and that will give us an attack 12. Then add the favorite, and now we have attack 18. Use eagle eye goggles for advantage, and now you have a boss killer. This move would be a double burn, but in a boss fight it will be worth it. The initiative is one of Hatchet's later ones at 64, but not as late as we might need sometimes. Now we come to Disorienting Barrage. The top of this one is our first non-loss multi-target ability with an attack 1, range 3, target 3, and muddle. An attack 1 is pretty anemic, so the main use of this one would be to muddle the 3 targets, though this could finish off some hurt or weaker enemies, maybe, or be useful in scenarios with lots of smaller enemies. We could add the favorite to one of these attacks though to get an attack 4 on one of the targets. The bottom of Disorienting Barrage is a loss, but can be really nice against some low health shielded enemies with a move 2, then all adjacent enemies suffer 1 damage, then move 1 and all adjacent enemies suffer 2 damage, then move 1 more and gain 1 XP. The initiative is a middling 51. Next we have Power Pitch which I mentioned just a minute ago with Double Throw's bottom. The top of Power Pitch is an attack 6 at range 3 that gives us 2 XP for a loss. This is a great ability well worth a loss if used with a favorite and advantage, and it's even better when used with the bottom of Double Throw as we talked about earlier. And just as a side note about advantage, if you're wondering why I'm always recommending it for high damage or loss attacks, barring any curses in our modifier deck, advantage guarantees we won't pull a miss on our attack as we get to pull two modifiers and take the better one. At worst, with an unimproved modifier pool, we'll pull a miss and a negative two, meaning we'll at least still hit. There is nothing worse than burning two cards to line up an attack 18 and then pulling a miss. But back to power pitch now, the bottom is a move 3 and activates wind which can be nice to set up stopping power top or extra lift top. The initiative is another middling one at 60. Follow through is next and this one is another one that pairs really well with our favorite. The top is an attack 2 at range 4, but if our target has our favorite on it already, we can add plus 2 to the attack and gain 1 XP. Just like the name suggests, this is a great attack to follow up with after using the favorite on an attack and get a good spread of 8 or more damage between the two turns. The bottom is a move 2, then push 2 on one adjacent enemy, and finally, if we have wind, move another 2. So with wind, this could be our only move 4 that isn't a burn. The initiative is another bad one at 39. Next up is second wind. This is a rare heal card for Hatchet, as the top is a self-heal for 6, activate wind and gain 2 XP, but it is also a loss ability, making this more of an emergency heal. The bottom is a move 3, but becomes move 5 and gain 1 XP if we've killed an enemy this turn. It can be hard to get the move 5 out of this one sometimes due to other characters taking out enemies or just getting a bad modifier, but it's great when it does work out. The initiative is another nice early one at 18. Moving into the more situational X cards now, first we have Care Package. The top of this one is a neat little attack and heal with an attack 2 at range 3 and then we can heal for 2 an ally adjacent to our target. This can be great for keeping our tank topped up on health. The bottom is a move 3 then heal 1 at range 1 and activate earth, which just means we can heal ourselves or an adjacent ally. The initiative is a meh 30. If you have a melee character in the party who is more often than not adjacent to enemies, then this can be a good card to bring along. Trading it in for close cuts or stopping power is probably your best bet. Next is extra lift. The top is an attack 2 at range 3, but if we have wind we can add plus 1 attack and 2 more range and gain 1 XP. So with wind we'll have an attack 3 at range 5, which is really nice for reaching almost anything in a room. The bottom is a move 4 and activate wind. Then we get an active ability that allows us to add plus 2 to our next 4 move abilities. The initiative is a decent 21. If you are playing a scenario that requires a lot of movement range, then this one may well be worth subbing in for something like stopping power. 
Finally, we have Fancy Hat. The top of this one is a move 3, then shield 2, activate dark, and gain 2 XP for the round, but is also a loss ability. Honestly, since Hatchet is really a ranged character, I don't see where you'd ever want to use a loss ability like this one. Maybe in a smaller party with no tank, but even then I think there would be better plays. The bottom is a bit more useful, adding plus one to all attacks for the round, which could be great when paired with Disorienting Barrage against smaller enemy swarms, but in general, you'll probably leave this card behind. The initiative is our lowest at level one though, with a 12. All right, let's move over to our early items now. First up, as you may have guessed, grab those eagle eye goggles to use with our favorite. Then grab some boots of strutting to help us keep up with the party and chase our axe around. For a potion, I'd go with either the power potion or the stamina potion. The stamina potion may be the better first choice just for the extra longevity since we only have 10 cards or nine with the favorite active. For armor, you'd probably be good with leather armor and for hand items, the throwing hammer is nice for a stun but I think I prefer the piercing bow for use against shielded enemies. The hatchet is a fun and powerful class to play, dealing ridiculous damage on a regular basis. In fact, if you play with a favorite, hatchet becomes a very simple class to play as you have a set rotation of attack with favorite, grab favorite, and repeat. On top of this, you'll be passively collecting a bunch of gold since to loot your favorite, you'll be looting the gold dropped by the enemies as well. If you enjoy a ranged style, staying out of the fray and assassinating enemies from range, then you will love the hatchet. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button as I very much appreciate it, and leave me a comment on what you think about hatchet. If you want to see more Gloomhaven class overviews, check out this video here, and as always, thank you so much for watching, have a great day, and keep on gaming.